Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So this is going to be my video going through the predictions for the IGCSE 0580 maths course for the exams on the 11th of October for paper two and the 18th of October for paper four. Now my predictions are bigger than better than ever to try and make them as accurate as possible for you. So I have taken the last 17 papers. I think my previous videos took about 12, 13 papers. So I've added a slightly more extra papers in to try and get as accurate idea as possible. So I'm going to go through first of all the almost certain and certain topics because those are the ones you want to focus your revision on first. And you can see here speed distance time comes in at a whopping 94%. Now this can vary in terms of the style of question. You'll see the one down here well, they'll give you a speed time graph. They could give you a distance time graph, or they could get you to just use the basic formula triangle, the basic formula of speed equals distance over time. So this can come in a few different ways, but as you can see, these could be easy marks in the bag for you. On to our next one, which is sequences. Comes up a lot on paper two compared to paper four. And we'll see that a bit later on at a 94%. And they're generally quite standard questions. So find the next term in the sequence, find the nth term of the sequence. You do have to be familiar with working with geometric sequences as well. So just be careful, they can be a bit more complicated or even quadratics as well. But at 94%, you should be revising this for paper two. Statistics, 82%, uh, which is pretty high considering it comes up mostly on paper four. Uh, but these questions are you know, tend to be very, very standard. Stem and leaf has been quite popular over the last few years. I put that into the statistics category, but just be aware they do like testing on stem and leaf and they've continued to do so as well. But here's a sample question for you where you need to work out the median of a set of numbers and then discuss why the median could be more appropriate than say, for example, the mean. On to similarity, which I was quite surprised when I did the research on this, at a whopping 76%. So three quarters of the time a similarity question arises. And you get volume of 3D uh, shape questions as well. The similarity on its own comes in at this percentage. Uh, here's an example question for you. This is a very standard question where they give you two shapes that are similar in some way and you have to work out either lengths and areas. So I include this question as a very standard one to be aware of. Variation and proportion at 82%, again, it's very, very high, it tends to come at the end of a paper and can be more complicated than you think on first sight. For example, this question 23 I found here, why is inversely proportional to the root of x? And then you've got a proportionality between x and another variable. So this is the way they can make the question slightly harder. Uh, this has always been popular and it stayed popular for the June 2023 exams. And percentage calculations, which comes up a ton on paper two and paper four, uh, here at 76%. Generally on the paper two though, they're generally very standard questions. So work out percentage of this, find the original percentage of this, find a percentage change. Very uh, clip and clear, as we say in German, very clear questions to solve. And onto the certain category, so above that 100%, and probability, again, it comes up a lot on paper two and paper four. This is no exception. This is the very last question on a paper two here. And notice they can vary these kind of questions. It could be an easy question towards the start, or it could be a really difficult question towards the end. Probability really does uh, go across the spectrum of difficulty. And you can see this question here. It starts off easy, but as you go into B and C, it gets much harder. Indices, again, much more of a paper two topic, and it come, comes in 100% exactly here. So you can see they'll get you to simplify uh, with brackets. Sometimes they'll give you a question very straightforward like this, and then work out the missing letter. Or they could even get you to solve some exponential equations. So you have two to the power of minus y is equal to one over eight, this kind of thing. So this can vary. It can be on the easier side and also on the harder side as well. And fraction skills, hopefully you expected me to say this because this bold text I'm sure you're used to from practicing from past papers. This will get you just to add, subtract, divide, multiply fractions in some way. Again, very standard, comes up pretty much every year. The alternative question is they might get you to do something like this, where I get you 0 0.27 uh, recurring, which is the same as 0 0.27777, and get you to write this as a fraction. That's also fairly common as well. 
And if you want more information on the paper too, I've summarized it here for you as well. So we've just gone through the almost certain and certain categories, but notice things like angle calculations come up 58% of the time here. If we look at functions, which is more of a paper four-ish topic, at 52.9% here. If you have circle theorems, again, we haven't mentioned that today, it's at 58.8%. So do be aware once you're happy with those almost certain and certain topics, then make sure you focus on the often topics afterwards. Okay, let's now look at paper four. So this is the 18th of October. First of all, is probability. We're back in with probability again at a whopping 94%. I'm going to talk about this in a bit more detail at the end of the video. I've started seeing some patterns, particularly on the paper four, that you need to be aware of for the higher grades. So you can see here, it could be a standalone question or combined with another topic. Volume surface area, 3D shapes. A bit surprising it didn't come up in the paper two, almost certain category, but certainly it's here for paper four. And if the question does come up, it's going to be a big question. This is a question five I found. And again, the entire question is just focused on your understanding of volume, surface area and capacity as well. Quadratics, again, this inserts itself into lots of different star questions at 88%. Um, here, we've got a question where we've got the areas of the rectangles, A and B is 20 uh, centimeters squared, the total together, and you have to work out the quadratic. So this is the idea of, okay, the area of this is just length times width. The area of this is, again, length times width. If you add those together, that gives you 20, and that leads then through to the quadratic. Very common kind of question. The alternative they love to do, particularly at two years ago, is have a speed distance time question that feeds into a quadratic. So be aware of those as well. Differentiation at 88%. Almost always at the end of the paper, always one of the more tough questions and usually lots of marks available as well. I'd really recommend look at my IGCSE All of Differentiation video. That's going to help you a ton. I've had many students in the past find that really, really useful to get up to speed on what you need to know. I mean, if you see this question, you go, oh, I have no idea even where to start with this and check out that video above. Sketching graphs, now this can vary. Um, the classical question was the table of values question where they get you to fill in a table of values and then use that to then work out a approximate solution using a straight line. That can happen. Alternatively, a question like this I saw right towards the end of the paper four where they give you a random function and you have to interpret it as well. So just knowing your graphs, what graphs look like, how to work out maximum minimum points, uh, what range of domain and range you can have is an important uh, thing to be aware of. Statistics is back and it's a huge topic. It, generally speaking on the course, it's a huge topic and in exam situation, it really is at 112%. Uh, you're gonna have things like estimate of mean, like you see in front of you, cumulative frequency, histograms, box plots, all feed into that same knowledge. So. If there are like three topics I would recommend like really just to know very, very well, statistics, percentage calculations, and working with volume and area. If you know those three topics, that gives you a good basis then for the exams. And talking of percentage calculations, that comes in at certain as well, at 118%. Again, this is generally towards the start of the paper, so some of the more easier marks on the paper, but you want to be getting those particular marks. So. You see a sort of typical question here, working out percentage increases, working out backwards and forwards in time. So really do revise this topic carefully. And again, I've summarized all this for you for paper four. So you can see all the sometimes often and certain, almost certain topics. Notice with paper four, again, generally you've got uh, fewer topics to really focus on. I haven't mentioned these ones here. I haven't even mentioned coordinate geometry in this entire video, but these should also be your focus as well. Particularly sine and cosine rule, that kind of question is quite common, and combining that with trigonometry and bearings in general is a common thing to be aware of. Now, this is what I've been uh, had ready for you as well. So what I've done, and this has been a big project of mine, we work on this for the last week or so, is I've identified for every question what topic comes up. So this is the paper two here. And notice I've gone through all the papers and identified which topics appear where. And I've done this for paper two. Again, you've already seen this table down below. And I've done the same here for paper four as well. 
Um, what I've done with paper fours, because they're bigger questions, I put down the two most important topics that appear in that question. So if you see here, for example, up here, November two, uh, 2021, version three, we've got transformations, but there's a little bit of Pythagoras also in that, in that particular question. Uh, the reason I bring this up, and if you want this document, by the way, and do check it out in the description below, is some of the patterns that you start to see going through this information. So one thing I wanted to point out here is if we look at statistics, notice, I'll put this in bold here, statistics and probability, and you can check this out at your leisure, go together quite often. So when you're revising statistics, think about how they can integrate probability into that style of question. Whereas if you take a functions question, generally speaking, they'll be more or less standalone. You see the example here, for example, it's just functions on its own. So one thing I do encourage you to do is see the patterns that are emerging. Okay, which two topics do they like to combine together? How can I revise those and make sure I really know how to do those questions? Uh, my second point, I want to go back to paper two. Uh, we talked about variation proportion being a almost certain topic. What I didn't talk about here is where it appears generally in the paper. So if I scroll across it, we've got variation proportion. That's at, uh, question 21 here. If we look at variation proportion questions, go across the past papers, you're going to see a pattern here. This is question 19, also one of the harder questions. Question 25. Poor people on the ver version one of June 2022. Variation proportion, question 24. Trig equations also works in that way. Question 23 here, question 22. There are certain topics like trig equations and variation and proportion that always come up towards the end of the exam. That means they're generally usually the harder topics. So if you're aiming for that A and A star, and you're already happy with a lot of C grade topics and B grade topics, then focusing on the topics I just mentioned here will then help you then push yourself onto an A grade and A star, because those are the topics that are coming towards the end of the exam and most students find quite difficult. So by using this chart that you see in front of you, you can then identify what kind of topics you want to be revising. Likewise, if you are looking to get that C grade and making sure that you pass the course, then focusing on the first six, seven, eight questions is important. You can see angle calculations come up a lot at the start. So that might be a topic you want to revise, build your confidence up to get that C grade and be working towards then the B grade afterwards. Okay, so gone through all the predictions for this uh, particular uh, set of exams in October 11th and the 18th. And to really get your revision absolutely supercharged, check out the video in front of you because I've made an IGCSE Maths past paper checklist that'd be really good for you to make sure you organize to have you completed all the past papers and you can tick it off as you go along. I also include all the video links to all the all of IGCSE playlists. So if if you're looking to revise variation proportion, you just click on that link and it will take you through.